All right, that's a very interesting question. How do we finance the company project? Um, we do things in a non-conventional way here. Um, the normal way that people get finance is they go to the bank, or they get uh, investors, or they get VCs or anything, or other stuff. We um, actually generate our money organically. And uh, what does that mean? It means that we focus on creating a community of people who have a shared interest in what we're doing. 6,000, um, dig we call them digital landlords. They are actually in a position to help us generate the kind of funds that we need uh, to achieve the major projects that we are working on. Make sense? Yeah, money. Um, uh, I look at the future, you know, and I look at um, green energy, renewable energy, digital, cyber security. Um, a friend of mine once said, he said, if you want to know where to put your money, look at where the next generation is focusing their energy. We, we are a dying generation. Yeah? Yeah, but the next generation are the ones that will be running on electric cars. The next generation are the ones that will be running on, um, the, um, on batteries, not uh, fossil fuel. All right, so what makes Shortlet Homes uh, unique from its base? Um, I think to us, it's giving the customers exactly what they want and keeping our promise. Who do I admire? I'm my dad. Um, that's why I admire. I admire my father. Uh, the question is, why? Uh, I've, I've, I don't know if I've said this story many times uh, to a lot of people. Um, where I am today is mainly because of what my dad made me do every single day. He would take me out for a walk and he would make me pick up all the nails on the floor. And I would do that every single day. I did that for years. And um, it didn't make any sense. I thought it was punishment. And one day I asked my dad, why do you make me pick up the nails on the floor? And he said, if I can help you understand the value of being a service to mankind from a very little age, that nail you picked up will not hurt the next man and you spend a whole day doing it then you are not you basically started to practice a lifetime of service a lifetime of meeting the needs of other people and that thing is changing my life to today i wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for him my first house that i bought in nigeria is the one that helped me uh to get it in terms of respecting it the first land we bought is the one that helped me so uh i had already forgotten nigeria already written nigeria off i'm never coming back here but you know he made way for me so he, he paved the way before he left, you know, so that's my hero right there. As a business manager, mm -hmm. do you find time to time to rest that after the business schedule? Everyone asks me that question. I think I rest every day. Um, I wake up when I want to wake up. I sleep when I want to sleep. I'm in control of my destiny. I am the author and finisher of my fate according to how God grants it. Yeah, let's look at our vision. Our vision is to create a home away from home, right? Um, and to deliver affordable luxury to everybody, okay? So that's our vision. So um, let's look at the next five years. I think that's because you can't predict the 10, 10, 20 years, okay? Even five years, you can't predict, but let's just look at five years. So uh, we want to be the Airbnb of Nigeria. Uh, and it's just that plain and simple. He wants and in order to do that it's simply constantly listening and adopting what it is that the customer wants some way or the other I hope it makes sense and we hope that it will create an international attraction to the real estate industry and for that fuel the real estate boom in Nigeria and we hope we can retire sometime very soon. Uh, my philosophy about life, um, there are three things that have stayed with me my whole life. I'll start with the worst one and I'll go to the best one. The worst one is, do not give your best to dogs and pigs. For they will not only trample upon what you give to them, but they will turn around and bite you. In a nutshell, not everybody qualifies for help. And not everybody qualifies to be in your circle. 
That's whole philosophy. The second philosophy is and based on what my dad brought me up to do, do unto others exactly, exactly as you will have God do unto you. Because not everybody loves themselves. Unto how you have done unto yourself. Some people don't love themselves enough and what they are doing to themselves is not good. So what if they do the same thing to other people, they damage other people. So my philosophy is do unto yourself exactly as God would have done unto you. And I think from that perspective, we would have very much profit. We will have a lot of peace in this world. And that's my philosophy in life. And um, so in business, be fair. In personal, be fair. In every area of life, be fair. But be fair in a godly way. I don't know if that makes any sense. And I think that sums up every other philosophy, <laughs> in my opinion. So the lesson you have learned from the COVID-19 COVID pandemic? Uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, let me put it in five. I'll start with the first one. Uh, the general who knows the future cannot lose the war. If you know the future, you cannot lose the war. Prepare. Prepare. Uh, one lesson I've learned is to take note of what has happened and not hope that it will not happen again, but prepare for it. So based on another pandemic coming again, what are you going to do? And that's what we did last year. Uh, we learned pretty quickly from the pandemic and we didn't suffer from it, thank God. But we made sure that whatever we learned from it, we assumed it will continue and we prepared for it. And as a result of it, January, which has been the worst month for a lot of companies, has been the best month for us. February is about to be the best month as well. So that is one. Uh, no. From my perspective, in terms of my business, create a home people feel safe in. One of the things that we were able to capitalize on very quickly was to create a home people could feel safe in. To create a home that people feel that, you know what, if I stay in short term, homes, my chance of catching COVID-19 is very slim. Mm -hmm. And that's because we made sure we have the right PPE equipment, personal protection care uh, uh, equipment. Okay on ground, we made sure that we have sanitizers, disinfectants, we adopted Airbnb's cleaning protocol and made it very clear that that's what we're following and we made it all, uh, aware to all of our customers and we basically, even our guests that were in the property, instead of them checking out, we told them what we're going to do and they were safe here. And instead of people checking out, they stayed for the whole three, four months of the period, of the pandemic period. So I think um, um, learn, understanding how to navigate through Okay? Nobody says chaos is not going to happen. But when it happens, understand how to navigate through it. How that makes sense. Yes, sir. Yeah? Now, the next thing, uh, and the next thing is what? That, sorry, the, the, I said I would name five things, right? Okay. Now, the third thing is to identify the opportunities in the midst of chaos. In fact, it's hard to find opportunities in times of peace. Opportunities come from problems. You know, uh, and that's why when people say, Lord, please take my problems away. I say, Lord, please don't take my problems away. God, please give me solutions to my problems and give me solutions to other people's problems. So learn to identify the opportunities that are created in the chaos. And that was one of the things that we identified straight away. Yes, people are not able to travel again. Most of the people that take short letters are people coming from abroad, right? Well, we decided to capitalize on local tourism, local bookings. Like Not a um, we went totally crazy. We talked, we saw it as bad news for us. I hope it makes sense. We saw it as bad news for us and we went totally crazy. Uh, but I have to take a step back and say, look, if they keep booking this place for parties and keep going crazy with these things, they're enjoying it. Well, why don't we provide a need to that service? Why don't we create a party house? And we created a concept, shared it with people. We don't build the place, we just share the concept. We're about to pay for the land this week. We have already sold out one year on four party houses at 50k each, 73 million naira. That came in 11 days. Customer service is at the heart of every 
every successful business. Which means that every year, we don't need to worry about where 35% of our business is coming from because of the smiles we put on our customers' face. In regards to real estate de development, yeah. what are your advice for the someone looking to get started? Um, my advice for someone looking to get started in the real estate market? Yes, sir. Um, in Nigeria, capital is a major issue, right? Yes. Getting money is a major issue. Um, I believe that you should take small but secure steps. I believe that you should focus on where value is added, but I also believe that you should join the bandwagon when going it alone is near impossible. So for let's look at three sets of people, or probably two sets of people. I want to get into the real estate industry, I have zero money, or I can never afford the kind of money to invest in prime locations. You want to focus on where value generates the most profits. And you're selling. Okay? Or you're building to rent, which local rent is will take you 20, 20 years to get your money back. Or you're building to short let, where you make at least 10 to 15, sorry, 50, about 15% of your money every single year, if not 20% of your money every single year. So, the problem is in these prime locations, even the person that is owing going on with 500k a month, who is considered a big boy, cannot afford to put 50 million down and buy maybe a townhouse. Even townhouse in Osaka is around 85 million now. That's a lot of money. So what are you going to do? Get mortgage? Mortgage is like 30%. So when you think about it, there is no room for the average guy. There is no room for the middle class set. I hope it makes sense, except the super wealthy or the wealthy. So for the everyday guy, you've got to join a consortium. You've got to gather. Um, I didn't have money to buy the second one, but I had friends. I hope it makes sense. And I spoke to my friends, and I spoke to people that follow me, people that buy into the vision of what I do. And I said, let's put money together and let's achieve something. And we bought three. And then we bought the next one, and then we bought the next one, and we bought the next one, until we ended up with 10. Does that make sense? Yes, and now, we are able to share the rental income. So, Peter invested 5 million. Okay. He collects 17% of 5 million. 10% of 5 million is 500k. 15% is 750. 17% would almost be 8 something. And he put five million down. If he wants to get around fifty k a year in rent, he may have to buy a mainland for maybe twenty million, or he may have to buy an ajak for maybe. But that's like collectively coming together, he put down five million, and he's collecting the amount of money the person has put for thirty million to collect. I hope it makes sense. So establish where value is. Create a consortium. Yeah and invest together. I hope you understand what I'm coming yes. from. That is a major big way to benefit from real estate. And if you have the money, identify where you can get your return on investment in a shorter period of time. And I would recommend that rather you go on local rent, you go for short let. However, if you're gonna go for short let, location matters. You can't do short let everywhere. I hope it makes sense. Yeah, so location matters a great deal. So if you're looking at real estate as a form of investment, you're either building to sell, okay, or you're building to rent. And if you're going to rent and you're expecting a high yield rental uh, uh, rental income, well, okay, somebody that went to Harvard University or somebody that went to um, my Harvard my my uh, potential Harvard uh, qualification based on your perception is from my father. Uh, he brought me up well. And he taught me well. Um, um, yes, I had an opportunity to study abroad, uh, but um, there is what your parents pay for, and there is what you pay for. Does it make sense? Yeah. Experience is the best teacher, and using your common sense is a great asset 